In this video, we're gonna talk about applying stone guard chip resistant coating and applying seam sealers. So yeah, a lot of cars come from the factory with stone guard on the bottom, it kinda of has a rough texture. Uh, maybe some that's just a, a clear piece of plastic. There's different kinds, but if that has stone guard on it, you need to match that. And you know, it has a purpose too. You know, that rough texture allows rocks and things to hit it without chipping your paint. You know, it makes it more durable. And uh, if, uh, if you have a car like that, you got to put that back. It's usually on the rockers and kind of on the lower sections of the car because that's where most of the rocks hit. So uh, we're going to talk about a way to do that. Now, there's a lot of different ways. Well, we're going to talk about just a spray can that 3M has. Uh, you can uh, duplicate what the factory looks like. You can kind of adjust the distance and get the texture that you're needing. And there's other ways to do it. Uh, 3M also has a product that you can use their AccuSpray with to do undercoating type of applications like this. But uh, we're just gonna talk about a spray can. I'm gonna flip over here. And we are talking about, let me, let me first talk about the ASC. This is a paint preparation. And we are talking about 721 and 722, apply, apply stone chip resistant coating and restore caulking and seam sealers to repair areas. Now, uh, they have it set up on here. I don't do it exactly this way, but I guess this is a way that uh, some people do it. But they kind of go through the order of uh, using primer sealer and then applying your stone chip resistant coating and then applying your uh, seam sealers, your caulking. And that's not the way I've always done it, but uh, in, in according to 3M, and you wanna do this before you apply your uh, primer sealer, because these are different colors. And if you uh, spray the bottom and it's a different color than your gray shade that your sealer is, well, you might, in, in my opinion, you might see through that and it might look like a different color on there. So I, I would prefer to do this first, kind of the opposite of this. Well, let's go ahead and get started on some of the different, uh, applications here. Um, we'll start off with the rocker panel uh, coating. And I will put a, a link down to these uh, technical data sheets for you so you can view later if you are using one of these. And it'll give you the part numbers and all that. And again, 3M is not the only company. It's the one I'm most familiar with. And they have pretty good products. It's always done a good job for me. But let's talk about the rocker panel coating. This is the ones in an aerosol can. Uh, we'll talk about that. It says a uh, product description, 3M rocker coating, uh, gray is, is resilient coating designed to pr uh, protect lower auto body panels from damage such as stone chipping. This coating is applied over primer coated panels and under top coats providing an additional layer of protection to the surface or to the substrate. The 3M rocker panel coating gray is compatible with most automotive paints. And uh, that's just kind of what the product is and, and the uses of it. And we're not gonna go through all of this, but I, uh, if you wanna come back, I will put a link where you can look at this a little closer. But I just wanted to hit on the preparation a little bit. It says, uh, to prepare for this, prime all bare metal surfaces with urethane, urethane or epoxy primers, that's 2K primers. Sand the primer using 320 to 500 grit, clean the surface and mask accordingly. Cause you're gonna mask off that lower section you know, where you're gonna spray the uh, coating at. And then it says use at room temperatures above 65 degrees, and that's Fahrenheit. Uh, shake until agitator ball moves freely in the can and shake, and shake can between coats to ensure solids are dispersed in the coating. Uh, two, apply a light even coat to the surface uh, from a distance of 10 to 12 inches. Allow five minutes to dry between coats. Apply additional coatings to match desired to de match desired texture. Allow adequate dry time between coats to avoid solvent bubbling. Texture can be varied by adjusting application speed, distance, and coating thickness. For best results, invert the can and spray to clear the actuator between coats in after use. And then allow one hour dry time when two coats are applied. More dry time needed if application coats have been if if more additional coats have been applied prior to painting. Lightly scuff sand using grade five to 600 abrasive and apply primer sealer prior to top coat. So uh, that's kind of how you use this. 
And this is kind of like the, the, the order I'm talking about, but it says before you apply the sealer and that makes sense to me. So after you got the car ready, it's about ready to go in the booth, you can go ahead and apply this coating and then uh, you know, re-scuff it. And then you can put your primer sealer and paint straight on top of that. And uh, that's, that's uh, pretty much uh, all there is to that. It's a pretty simple process. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, you'll probably want to get your little test panel out and mess with the distance and the thicknesses you're putting it on. That way you can get match the texture that it came from the car, which pro probably you're going to be matching, you know, another panel. You know, it's, you probably, you know, if you're doing the whole side or the whole car, it may not be as critical, but if you're trying to match a door and a fender in the right texture, you want to make sure that you get that right. Okay, now we're going to talk about seam sealers. Now there's different types of seam sealers, but basically they're all designed to, to, uh, for joints, you know, to, to seal them. You know, so moisture don't get in there and it's, you know, to provide corrosion protection. So uh, water and dirt and things like that don't get in between uh, two joints and start causing that type of problem. Uh, they have different kinds. They've of course got the, the one, uh, 1K product. It's just, uh, it uh, doesn't have a hardener or anything like that. And then they've got uh, bare metal. You know, there, there is some that's designed to go straight over bare metal. And then of course there's leveling and there's different kinds they have so that you can get that factory look that you're looking for but let's go ahead and start with the bare metal seam sealer this is beige uh, and again this one can be applied directly over metal but it can also be applied over sand paint and primers as well so let's read what the product description is on that it says 3m 3m bare metal seam sealer Beige uses two-part epoxy technology. So these, this is a talk, uh, epoxy based, and that's why you know it has the corrosion protection in it. Uh, technology provide a tough yet flexible material for the sealing of joints of bare metal as well as primed or painted substrates such as steel or aluminum enclosures. This material provides quick cure time and non-sag properties that aid during vertical applications and allow top coating within with paints within 15 minutes. Under normal conditions, 3 ohm bare metal seam sealer, beige contains chemical corrosion inhibitors. So yes, this one is designed for bare metal, but make sure they're not all, it's, you know, they just got certain ones that are, just like primer. If it's not a direct metal uh, primer, you don't wanna, or, or seam sealer, you don't wanna put it on there, on, on bare metal. So let's talk about the uses. It's, and again, it's a two part, all-purpose automotive sealing needs uh, needs that cures quickly uh, to tough, strong bead for lasting seam sealing properties or protection. This includes door skins, floor pans, trunk panels, roof seams, and many other applications. Can be tooled, uh, can be tooled, cocked with an OEM seam sealer tips, and it tells you which tips to use. And this is the, the gun. It's a two-part, and, you know, it's like the the other three ohm adhesives that come in, in the two part cartridges. And it is a two part mixes together in the tip. So I uh, uh, got about 10 minutes work time, uh, cures an hour, but you can paint after 15 minutes or use primer sealer. And then it'll go over surface preparation. Again, I'm not gonna go over all that, but this link will be down in the description and you can read all the surface uh, preparation, you know, step by step. Okay, now let's talk about the control flow seam sealer. This is a little di bit different style because sometimes you want a real smooth. And again, we're always trying to match that factory appearance and that's why they have different seam sealers. This one flows out real nice for a real smooth surface. So let's, uh, let's read the description on that. 3M control flow seam sealer uses two part urethane, this is urethane technology to provide a tough, flexible material for the sealing of joints on primed or painted substrates such as steel or aluminum enclosures. 3M Control Flow Seam Sealer works particularly well in areas where a flowable self-leveling type seam sealer is required. Is, it is desired to flow one to two inches and then begin to cure preventing fur further flow out from material. This feature allows the user to control the application preventing excessive waste while maintaining a uniform thickness, even on substrates that are not level. So this one will flow, but it will start to harden so that it does, uh, doesn't just keep on flowing. 
uh, you know, it's, it's designed to have a certain amount of flow. And, and again, you know, all these seam sealers are, are different designed to where you can make it look like the factory because you don't want one side looking like uh, this and the other side looking different. And so that's why they have different products to help you achieve that. I mean, all seam sealers are basically the same thing. They're, they're flexible. So the joints, you know, expand or move a little bit. They're flexible. They have very little uh, shrinkage, you know, because they're designed to fill in that gap, that area. So uh, there's some design that's uh, for bigger areas or smaller areas, but it's all basically for the same thing. Uh, for this uh, product uses, typical product uses include automotive roof ditch application where flow grade sealer is required. Control seam sealer flows one to two inches. Okay, we pretty much talked about all that. And then it gives you the tips and all that that you can use for that. So work time is three minutes, not real fast. Uh, cure time's two hours, but you can paint it after 40 minutes or apply primer sealer and then paint is what I do. And again, all the directions step-by-step step are down here if you want to look at this later. Now let's go, now this is just the, your regular seam sealer that's been around for years. It's a one part, you know, you just put it in a regular caulking gun and then put it on there. But let's talk about what this product is for. And again, I'm just going over these three basic ones. There are more uh, depending on your application. It says 3M Fast and Firm Seam Sealer is a one part solvent based automotive seam sealer designed for applications to exterior body seams. 3M Fast and Firm Seam Sealer should be applied to properly prepared primer or painted uh, coating surfaces and may be painted with common automotive type paints. And then it just talks about it, you know, it comes in the cartridge, you know, the size of the cartridge and all that. But just, this one, you can use a regular uh, caulking gun. Directions for use. Uh, again, we won't go over all that. This one's pretty simple. You know, you clean it, sand it with 180 to 320, uh, blow, blow the surface clean, you know, for proper adhesion. And then, you know, you put the tube in there and cut the, the tip. And again, this one doesn't have to mix in the tip. You know, it comes straight out of the tip and then dries. Uh, it says allow 30 minutes uh, before painting. And after 24 hours, if you wait longer than 24 hours before you apply your, your primer sealer or your paint, you will need to scuff it lightly to provide the proper adhesion. So again, in this, in this uh, industry, there is no one exact right way. I mean, there's a lot of right ways. There's some wrong ways you want to avoid, but there's a lot of different right, right ways to get from A to B. And me personally, my opinion, I would want to do this before I apply the seam or apply the primer sealer, just because, you know, I want that uniform color before I apply my paint. And that's kind of what 3M recommends too. But according to the NATEF, that ASC list, they follow a little bit different sequence, but uh, just check I, my recommendation. If you're using 3M, I will put these links down here and they have others too. They have other seam sealers for different applications uh, for different textures and all that. But I will, these are th three of your more common ones. I will put these in the, in the description. And if you're using some other product, I mean, th there's a lot of other different type of pro uh, brands out there. If you're using one of them, what I do recommend is finding the technical data sheet uh, like this and see what it says. You always want to follow those technical data sheets. I mean, they have people that research those and they know what they're talking about and it's been tested and I would try to follow those, uh, those technical data sheets. Well, that's it for this video. If you like this video, be sure and give us a thumbs up, give us a like, uh, share with your friends, subscribe if you're not a subscriber. Thanks for watching, take care, and we will see you in the next video.